Blog Talk Radio. Bismillah. <laughs>
sperm. Sperm mainly is a white liquid ejaculated at orgasm during sexual intercourse with smell similar to the pollen of the, of the date palm. Woman discharge and menstruation. The liquid which comes from a woman is a thin yellow fluid and necessitates purification. That is, that is purification of the whole body as is the case after menstruation. <coughs> Post menstruation. In the case of bleeding which continues beyond the normal period of menstruation, only voodoo is necessary. Although in such circumstances it is recommended for a woman to repeat voodoo for every prayer. In, in continence of voodoo, of yarn. This is also the case of incontinence of yarn. Loss of loss of consciousness, deep sleep. You have to do voodoo as the loss of consciousness caused caused by deep sleep. Fainting. Mm -hmm. Drunkenness or intoxication. Extending or or about of madness. Voodoo on account of touching a person. Voodoo is also necessary when you touch someone to gain sexual pleasure or have bodily contact with them for for the same reason. Okay. We have three or four things we have to make it clear in, in fiqh. al madiyu wal waliyu wal maniyu They have different way to treat them. First of all, he say al madiyu ma uh, there's something like mani, uh, uh, and the main habit most of the time when the men sit down and think about women you will see under his private part with a little bit smell like he has money like spam when you put water there you will feel like like smell, or you can see uh, uh, like some smell. It's little bit smell like money shape, but it's not money. It's not spam. Always came to the man when he sit by himself and think about women so much. He stand for himself, come down for himself without uh, the sperm to come out from him, this madi will come out from him. That madi, what is the hukmu of that? How you can handle that in Sharia? Did you go take bath, like clean all your body, like how you do for money or not? That's why we have to be careful, because fix certain things, I have to make it clear for you, so that when you get ijazah, when someone give you question, you know how to handle it. Madi. What did Imam Malik say about the Madi? How to treat Madi? And Madi, you You will clean all your private parts under you from starting to ending. From you, between you, you try to clean all of that with the water before you make wudu. But you don't need to make muscle like clean yourself as to have contact with the woman. Always when Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, he, this is one of his problems. Ali always, what we will came to him, he, will, he, he came to the Prophet and asked him question, oh, always when I'm sitting, because Ali will have more like feeling that is the Allah SWT created. So always this will come to him. He called the Prophet وسلم, to ask him about how he can treat these things. The Prophet said, clean your private part with the water, for you don't need to take ghusl like clean all your body. That is the madi. He came to the man when he think about sex with women so much. And he don't have it, and he don't do it. The second thing, that is Al-Wadiyu. For who are found Abiyah, Al-Wadiyu also is a white water. Kharikun, Yakuru, the Islam Bawl. It's 
just like like when you say sample, like how is sample when you put sample in your boat in your hand, you make it like this. How is soft and yeah? But he came that the, the, the al Madi also came from man when he make you know, when he peace. Some of the time you will see after you from the peace. You will see the head of his private part. You will see the little white water will take after the make peace. So, what is the? How can you trick that in eyes of Sharia? Did you need to go take shower, killing your bo all your body like you making ghusl? No, it's not necessary. Just make sure that after the bowl, after you make a urine, you make it peace. Try to clean all your private, the head of your private part, you know that you clean it with clean water, you, okay, now you can go make water. That name and what The The third thing is al Sehada. al Sehada means for every woman who will do. That, that al istihada always came for the women. al istihada always came for the women. Like, uh, you know, the, and, and, and every woman has his period time. Some of them is six days, some of them longest days is 15 or 14 days. But after their period is stopping, maybe you, after the period stop, like if their period is, like if their period is, Seven days, you see still now, you bleed a little bit. You go bleeding like almost 20 days, and you used to stop like 14 days. If you used to stop like six days, you see you still bleeding seven days, eight days, nine days, ten days. Now, the Sharia told you that, okay, stick on your maximum period of seeing your menses. Above that, like two, three days, they name that is Sahara. It's not normal. So how the women can handle that? The women will handle is Sahara. Like every time of prayers, she will need to use bathroom, clean herself, make wudu, and pray. Every salah, she has to go to the bathroom, clean her private parts, make sure that she clean or clean all the blood came, or all the, anything come out uh, the, after the salat or the salah, she had to clean that up. But after cleaning, she make what do, she's making salah, anything came, that don't break his salah, her salah. Her salah is value. What she used to do, between each salah, she had to go clean herself and do the salah. But that is not the max, the, uh, the origin maximum of the period time, she should not make salah. But after that, she said, oh, I used to stop him on uh, six days. But now I go up to 10, 12, 15 days. Still now it's coming. She has to make salah. But she will treat herself according to the Sharia education to her. She has to clean herself every salah before he makes salah. She makes salah. The fourth thing is Tasasul Baul. You will see. Some men, it's a kind of sickness. You will see when they sit down, the unit will change to them. The water will change from their private part. It will be some when they get in order, it will happen to them. Some when they get some kind of sickness, you will see the, the water will come to them. Some the hospital will put something on them so that they, their peace can go there. That type of uh, sickness, what they're going to do, like they will treat themselves like how the, the sisters should treat themselves. Each of every salah, she has to go to the bathroom, or he has to go to the bathroom, clean his private parts, and make what do. But if he is performing salah, anything came out, since he should not worry about that. Continue your salah. Your salah is valid. Because it's beyond your control. That's why they say it's shahada what a salah so these are very important. You have to know so that when 
somebody came and asked you, we have Madi, al wadi Tasalsul, Istihada, you know how to answer them and give them correct information. Yeah. Okay, right, okay. Let me go. وَالْقُبْلَةُ لِلَّذَّةِ مَنْ مَنْتَ ذَكَرًا وَاقْتَلَفَ فِي أَمْسِ الْمَرْأَةِ فَرَجَهَا فِي لَمْسِ الْمَرْأَةِ فَرَجَهَا فِي إِجَابِ الْوَدُودِ ذَلِكَ وَيَجِبُ التُّهُرُ مِمَّا ذَكَرْنَا مِنْ قُرُوجِ الْمَاءَ الْضَافِكِ لِلَّذَّةِ فِي النَّوْمَ أَوْ يَكَبَى مِنَ الرَّجُلِ أَوْ الْمَرْأَةِ أَوْ إِنْكِتَاءِ دَمُّ الْحَيْدِ وَالْإِسْتِحَادَ أَوْ النِّفَاسِ أَوْ الْمُغِيدُ عن الحفظة من الفرج وإن لم ينزل مغيث الحفظة من الفرج فيجب الغسل ويجب الحد ويجب الصداقة ويوصل الزوجين ويحل المطلقة الثلاثة لذي طلاقها ويفسد الحج ويفسد الصوم إذا رأت المرأة قصة بيضاء تطحر أو ذلك وإذا أرأت الجوت الطهر مكانها رأته بعد اليوم أو يومين أو ساعة ثم إذا أودها دم أو رأت السفرة أو كدرة تركت الصلاة ثم إذا انقطع عنها اقتصلت وصلت ولكن ذلك كله قدم واحد في عدة والاستراء حتى يبعد ما بين الدمين مثل ثمانية أيام أو أشرة فيكون حيضها مغتنفا من تماجي. Hello, what is the program already? Touching the human genital, a man must do voodoo if he touches his penis, a woman touches her vagina, but there is a difference of opinion about whether a woman has to do voodoo if she touches her vagina. Gusel, gusel because of the mention of sperm. You have to do the gusel when, as as has already been mentioned, sperm is ejaculated accompanied by sexual pleasure either during sleep or when awake, whether from a man or a woman. Okay, that's clear. Sperm when he came from man, and he came out whether whether the man is sleeping like by dream or by not sleeping. What he have to make gusel before he perform the salah. <clears throat> At the end of menstruation and lokia, this was also necessary at the end of bleeding from menstruation, false menstruation or menguria. This was necessary when a normal bleeding stops. Lokia, this was necessary at the end of the period of bleeding, which falls. This was also is necessary even like end of the period or menses or even false bleeding as a woman. After she see that stopping, she have to make us. This was necessary at the end of the period of bleeding which follows childbirth. Mm -hmm. Penetration of the vagina. This one must also be done if the head of the penis penetrates the vagina, even though no ejaculation takes place. Okay, that also is important. Fick don't have no shameness. You have to forgive me what I will say. Like me, uh, you and uh, your uh, the wife and uh, uh, husband, they intend to have sex. They start it. The the main body part head go inside the wife, but something happened. He don't complete it, and no sperm come out. He have to make us. That he want to tell you that he have to make. غسل ذات البيتك عن الحديث في محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا التقى الختانان وجبت الغسل. at that stage the men women they both should make غسل for that stage. legal consensus on vaginal vaginal penetration. غسل is obligatory. the penetr this penetration of the vagina by the head of the penis is Necessitates gusel. Legal consensus in the case of fornication. It necessitates the, the head punishment and the payment of the diary and gives the married couple the status of being mufsan and make a woman who has gone through a triple divorce allow for her original husband and 
Invalid validates hard and fasting. Invalidation of hard and fasting. It invalidates hard and fasting. Gussel administration. When gussel is done after menstruation, a woman does gussel immediately when she sees the white liquid, which comes at the end of menstruation, or when she notices notices dryness, even even if she noticed this after a day or two, two days or only an hour. Resume, resume bleeding. If bleeding starts again or if she sees any yellow yellowish discharge, she must stop doing the prayer. And then when the bleeding stops again, she should do gristle and start the prayer once more. Legal consideration of such gaps. When the situation occurs, it is considered as one menstrual period when rec reckoning the period of Idda or the per uh, period of it's, it's the bra. Consideration of a long gap. If there is a considerable interval between the two periods of bleeding, such as eight or ten days, then the second one is
he will go back, make, renew his world, but he will make it one one. The prophet do different. He do one, he do two, two, he do three. So that's why in the Sunnah, if you know that now you here, you just in the masjid, and the time for salah, you prefer that let me go renew my wudu. Make it once. Don't waste the water. Because you know that all your like your hand there's no dust and you still clean. Like a sunnah, use water has a limit. Like don't waste water. You can do it too. Like people you came to the masjid, you find Imam is leaving people. And you don't want the Salat al Jamaah finish before you came. Make your wudu like once or two. So that you can quit came and make the wudu. It's a sunnah. The hadith came, the prophet did it one time, he did it two, and he did it three. So that's why he said, Wa amdadu muddati alayhi salatu wa salam wa taharatu al bukatu lis salat al wajiba wa kadalika taharatu sawbu. Taharatu sawbu. فَكِيلَ إِنَّ ذَلِكَ فِيهَا وَاجِبٌ وَجُوبُ الْفَرَائِدُ وَكِيلَ وَجُوبُ السُّنَنُ الْمُعَكَّلَ وَيُنْهَا عَنِ الصَّلَاةِ فِي مَعَاتِنِ الْإِبْلِ وَمَحَجَّةِ الطَّرِيقِ وَالذَّهَرُ الْبَيْتِ اللَّهِ الْحَمَامِ وَالْحَمَامِ حَيْثُ لَا يُؤْقِنُ مِنْهَا تَحَارَةٌ وَالْمَجْبَلَةٌ وَالْمَجْزَرَةٌ وَالْمَقْبَرَةُ الْمُشْرِكِينَ وَكَنَائِسُهُمْ وَأَقَلُّ مَا يُسَلِّي فِيهُ الرَّجْلُ مِنْ لِبَاتٍ وَاحِدٍ سَاتِرٌ مِنْ دِرْعٍ أَوْ رَدَائٍ أَوْ دَرْعُ الْقَمِيسِ وَيُكْرِهُ أَنْ يُسَلِّي ثَوْبًا لَيْسَ عَلَى كَتْفِهِ مِنْهُ شَيْءٌ فَإِنْ فَعَلَ لَمْ يُعِدْ وَأَقَلُّ مَا يُجْزِي الْمَرْأَةُ مِنْ لِبَاتِ فِي الصَّلَاةِ الدَّرْعُ عَصِيفٌ سَابِغٌ الَّذِي يَسْتُرُ ظُهُرًا قدمي والخمار تقنع به وتباشر بكفيها الأرض في السجود مثل الرجل. Purity of the place and clothing. Purity of place. It is obligatory for the place where you are going to do the prayer to be pure. Purity of clothing. Your clothing must also be pure. It is said by some that the nature of the obligation referred to here is that of an absolute obligation and by others that it has the obligation of a confirmed sunnah, places where it's forbidden to pray, camel places, and places where camels congregate, the middle of the road, or in the middle of the road, on top of the Kaaba. We cannot play on top of the Kaaba. Nobody can come and just stand on top of the Kaaba you pray. Or anywhere the camel live there, they do everything they 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 they, they, they they, 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 they live there like every day. Where they live in, you cannot just come there and make your salad there. And you cannot come in the middle of the, uh, the street or the road, you just make your sujada, you say you pray there. That's not good. No. Public bath or public bath places, a place which you are not certain whether it is pure or not. Rubbish dumps, slaughterhouses, graveyards, Non-Muslim places of worship and places of worship of non-Muslim. And we can offer our salah in faith here. Minimal clothing in the prayer for a man. The least clothing a man can do can do the prayer is something which covers his hour, such as a long shirt or a piece of cloth he can wrap around him. Uncovered shoulders. However, it is this like to do the prayer wearing something that does not cover the shoulders, but it it it. If this does happen, the prayer need not to be repeated. Woman's dress and prostration. A woman's minimal dress. The least clothing of a woman can do can do the prayer is is in is a thick full length garment covering her whole body, including the top of her feet and something covering her head. A woman's prostration. A woman should touch the ground with the palms of her hands is subdued just as a man does. Did you start chapter 4? Yeah. No. Babu sifatil wadu il masnuna wa masnunihi wa mafrudihi. Wa dhukira al istinja'u wa istigma. 
وليس الاستنجاء مما يوجب ان يوصل به الوضوء ولا في سنن الوضوء ولا في الفرائضه وهو من باب الايجاب زوال النجاسه به او الاستجمار لئلا يصلى بها في جسده ما يجيز فعله بغير نية أو كذلك الغسل الصوب النجس وصفة الاستنجاء أن يبدأ بعد الغسل بيده فيغسل مخرج البول ثم يمسى ما بما بما في بما في مخرج من الأذى بمدار أو غيره أو يده ثم يحاك بالأرض ويغسلها ثم يستنجي بالماء ويواصل صبه ويستخرج خليل ويجيب ارقا ذلك بيده حتى ينذف وليس عليه الغسل باطن من مخرجين ولا يستنجي من ريه ولا استثمار بثلاثة احجار يخرج اخرهن تقيا جزاء والماء الاطهر واطيب احب الى العلماء ومن لم يخرج منه البول ولا حائط فودع للحدث او النوم او لغير ذلك مما يوجب الوضوء فلا بد الغسل اليدين قبل دخولهما في الاناء ومن سنه الوضوء الغسل chapter 4 on how to do the wudu and what is far and sunnah in it how to clean yourself after going to the lavatory with water or with stones and other things essential not part of wudu cleaning yourself with water after going to the lavatory should not be considered a part of wudu being neither one of a sunnah nor is a sort aspect its purpose however you have to do it in order that all in order that all impurities are removed before doing the prayer you do not have to make a special attention before doing it impurity on clothes the same thing applies when washing impurities off clothes description of the sinja The way you wash yourself after going to the bathroom is first of all to wash your hands and then to then the end of the penis where the urine comes out. You then wipe any impurities from your anus using hard earth or other things of your left hand, which you should then wipe on the ground and wash. Further cleaning. After this, you wash your anus by pouring water over it. which you continue to do while at the same time relaxing relaxing it a little rubbing the area thoroughly with the left hand until it is clean what is unnecessary you do not have to wash the inside or either of the two openings in case of breaking wind you should not do a stinger on account of having broken wind it's it's tomorrow it's tomorrow it's tomorrow number of stones when doing it's the this bar it's it, yeah. Yeah. it is sufficient to use only three stones provided that the last one comes out clean water is better but using water is more more purified pleasant pleasantry and purified by the men of knowledge washing the hands before wudu if someone has neither urinated nor defecated but is doing wudu because he has broken it in some other way or has been asleep or done something else which make it necessary for him to do wudu he should wash his hands before he puts them into whatever water container he is using okay wal istinshaq wal istinsharu wal masih al udnain sunnatun wal baqiyatu fardun ma mimman qama ila wudu min al nawm aw ghayrihi faqad qala ba'd al ulama yabda فيسط فيسمى الله ما لم يرى بعضهم من امر من المعروف وكون الاله على اليمين امكنه ان تناوله بيده فيغسل يده قبل ادخالهما في الاله ثلاثه فان كان قد بال او او او, أو تغيت غسل ذلك منه ثم توضا ثم يدخل يده في الاله فيغسله فياخذ الماء فيتمضمد فاه ثلاثه من غرقه واحده ان شاء الله او ثلاثه غرفات والاستنساء باصبعه فحسن ان يستنسخ بانفه 
al-ma'u alladhi istarjahu salata fa yaj'alu yadahu ala anfihi wal intikhadihi wa yujizihi aqallu min salata fi madmadati wal istinsaq wa lahu al-jam'u dhalika fi ghurfatin wahida wa nihayatun ahsanu thumma ya'khudhu al-ma' insha'allah bi yadihi jami'an wa insha'a bi yadihi al-yumna fa yaj'aluhu fi yadihi jami'an thumma yanquluhu ila wajhihi fa yafriquhu alayhi ghasilan lahu bi yadihi min a'la jabhatihi wahdahu manabitun sha'ri ra'sihi ila tarafi dhaqnihi wa dawrihi al-wajhi kulluhu wahdahu a'zamu al-lahiyatu wa dhuknuhu wa yumna sunnah obligations of wudu washing the hands to the wrist the sunnah of wudu includes washing the hands before putting them into the water container rinsing the mouth rinsing the mouth sniffing up water sniffing up water into the nose and blowing it out again wiping the ears and wiping the ears these all are sunnah actions obligatory elements of wudu the rest being obligatory how to do wudu bismillah some of the men of knowledge say that when you when you go to do wudu because you have been asleep or for any other reason you should begin by saying bismillah whereas others say that this is not part of doing wudu correctly where to place the where to place the water vessel it is easier to get at the water if the container is on your right hand side washing the hands three times you being by you been by washing your hands three times before putting them into the water container. If you have gone to the uh, lavatory, ex- except if you have just your nigger or defecated, in which case you wash off any trace of import- impurity before starting to do voodoo. Rinse in the mouth. You put your hand into the container, take some water, and rinse your mouth out three times. Use either one handful or three as you wish. Rubbing the teeth. It is also good to rub your teeth with your finger. Sniffing water up the nose. You then sniff up water into your nose. Blow water out the nose. And blow it out again three times. Hold your nose as you do when you blow it. Number of times. It, it is all right if you do this rinsing and sniffing less than three times. It is also all right to do all of this with only one handful of water, but three handfuls is preferable. Washing the face, wetting the face. Then you take the water either with both hands together or with the right hand bringing the hands together afterwards and using both hands to pour the water onto the face. Actual washing of the face. Then using both hands, you wash the face. Area covered top of forehead from the top of the forehead, which is marked by the hairline. End of the chin. To the end of the chin, covering the entire face, covering the whole area of the face from the jawbone to where the air start, making sure you include the eye sockets, any wrinkles on the forehead and the bottom of the nose. Doing it three times. You wash your face in this way three times, taking water to it. The beard. Okay, continue. When washing your face, you rub. You rub the beard with uh, both palms to make sure that water gets into it since hair has naturally tendency to repel water. You do not have to put your fingers through your beard when doing voodoo according to the to Imam Malik. You merely rub your hands over your beard down to the end. The second obligation, the hands. You, you then wash your right hand and forearm three times or twice pouring water over it and rubbing it with the left hand, making the fingers of one hand go between the fingers of the other. Then you wash the left hand and forearm in the same way, instead of washing the hand and arm. When washing the arms, you go right up to the elbow, including it in what you wash. It has also been said that you only wash up to the elbow, and that it is not necessary to include them but it is better to include them in order to remain on the safe side. The third obligation, wiping the head. Then you take the water with your right hand, pour it onto the left hand, and use both hands. You wipe over your head. 
beginning at the hairline at the front of the head, you place fingertips together with the thumbs at, at the temples, then wipe over your head with both hands as far as the hairline at the back of the neck. Then you bring them back to the then you bring them back to the place you started, bringing your thumbs up behind your ears back to the temple. Okay. Yeah. Complete. Whatever way you wipe your head is acceptable, as long as the whole head is covered, but the way mentioned is better. If you were to put both hands into the container and lift them out wet and wipe over your head with them, this is also acceptable. Okay. Now, uh, let me have this also. The wudu, the Quran in wudu is four. Has the Quran came like yesterday? The sister was having question about that. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu idha kumtum ila salati faqsilu wudu hakum. The first pillar, the fact of the wudu is your face. Faqsilu wudu hakum. After the face is from here to here. Not here, from here up to here. That is the second in Wadu, Le Fard, not Sunnah. After the hand, where you have to go? Your head. Number three. After your head, the feet from here up to here. These are the form. All what you see, they add in the Wadu, that is the Sunnah. That's from Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But the one came, the, the things came in the Quran. Ya ayu ladina amanu, iza kumtum ila salati faqsilu wajuhakum, your face, wa aidiyakum, your hand, wa msahu biru usikum, your head. And in Imam Malik, like the fad in head, like only this, this is the fad. To return it is the sunnah. This is the fad. To come back, to return it, is the sunnah. وَمْسَهُ بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ وَأَرْجِلَكُمْ إِلَى الْكَعْرِ وَمْسَهُ بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ This وَمْسَهُ بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ like the, the bar بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ in the ayah the, the ulama ul grammar in Arabic language the some say oh that's why when you see a shafi or certain master like in the man or woman you just make wudu you don't need to go all of your your head just a little bit like they make like the ruus because some say the b is half ba ul juzi'ir like half ba ul juzi'ir like even lit like you put like you know that you busy or you make your hijab like a sister or men make a mama you cannot remove it like the brother do you don't want to move uh, like, like move it and fix it again so you just Make it like this. You put your hand in uh, under it. You make it like this. You have to do according to their understanding about the grammar. One sahu, biru musikum. B, just they say, touch half of your head, like even just little from it. But Imam Malik say no, make it all. He always tries to do his best. Either you have it all, but you don't have less. That is Imam Malik Madhab. Like, you know that, okay, when you do it like this, now you don't need to worry. If it's for half, you do half and you do full. But when you make it, what do you see some brothers or some sisters, they make like this, or some brothers, like, like the brother, you make it like this, don't, don't argue with them. You know that they are doing what the scholars say also. So after that, like to clean your hand three times is a sunnah. Go to your mouth three is a sunnah. Your nose three is a sunnah. Even the hand from here to here is a sunnah. It's a sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Even the water, before you use the water to make fuslo or anything, you have to clean your this hand three. Because the Prophet says, you don't know where your hand sleep on you when you were sleeping. Then you come sleep. Don't just came and put your hand in your water for the wudu. Because you don't know where your hand slip on you. That became a sunnah. We have to clean 
our hand tree starting what to be this middle even he this and this we do it is all sunnah but it's a sunnah for akada it's a strong sunnah you don't play with them like say oh it's a sunnah there are certain sunnah you can do them if you want to if you can able but there are certain sunnah sunnah for akada you have to to leave them with your own desire is not good for you and you can commit a sin for that. So it's a sunnah, the wudu, the four pillars of the wudu is face, heart up to here, head and our feet. So the Prophet sallam, this is for Allah and the second one is for the Prophet sallam, like Salat al-Fajr. The Fajr Salah is two rakah only, that is fun. The two rakah we make before we make salah or after the salah is a sunnah. It's for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah subhanahu wa taala give it to him. Two rakah we pray before the fajr. Sunnah rakatain is fajr. That is for the Prophet. That's a sunnah. Or it's a sunnah muakkad. There is no hadith can tell you of sunnah muakkad means what the Prophet stick on it and do it all his life. There is no one can say, oh, today he leave this up. Some of the sunnah, sometimes he may do it, sometimes he don't do it. But sunnah mu'akkada, like the prophet, is in his daily life, like, you see, constantly. There is no hadith can came to you, oh, today we pray with the prophet, Salatul Fajr, he don't pray sunnah, he don't pray two rakah before the Fajr. No, you cannot find that hadith. So those kind of sunnahs, even like you sleep up to like 10 o'clock, you just wake. You have to pray two rakah after you pray your fajr. Or you came to the masjid, you find the imam is leading people with the fajr prayers. Now join with them. But after salam, come pay your fajr. Maybe Imam Malik has some option there, but it's a sunnah, you have to do it. After the salam with the imam, your fajr, and you know that you don't pray two rakah in your house. And you don't pray the Fajr two rakah before the Fardu Salah, after the Salah with the Imam, you have to come aside and do it. But Imam Malik said, no, you have to wait until when the song came out, you can pay it. But Shafi and all Mazhab, they said, no, you can do it right away after you finish with the Imam your Salah. Because they're scaring about, maybe you can forget doing an Sunnah Muakkara. So sometimes the Mazahib, then when they say this and some say this, sometimes you use your talent, you know what? Easy for you at that time. And what is easier for you at that time to do, you do that also. Okay. Yadahu ala al-ghari min al-zahiri wa ajifanihi wa sarairi jabhatihi wa ma tahta مارنهي من من الظافر أنفه يغسل وجهه ثلاثة وينقل الماء إليه Okay. وكفاه مسح أجزاءه إذا أو رأسه والأول والحسن ولو دخل يده في الإناء ثم رفعهما ببلوتين ومسح بهما رأسه أجازه ثم يفرق الماء على أصبتيه وإبهاميه وإن شاء غمس ذلك في الماء ثم يمسح قدنيه ظاهرهما وباطنهما وتمسح المرأة كما ذكرنا وتمسح على دلالة إليها ولا تمسح البكاية ويدخل يدها من تحت الأقصاد شعرها في رجوع يديها في المس ثم يفصل رجليه ويصيب الماء بيده اليمنى على رجليه اليمنى 
wa yu'arrifuha bi yadihi al-yusra qalilan qalilan thumma bi wai'iha dhalika thalatha wa in sha'a khallala asabi'ahu fi dhalika wa in taraka fala haraja wa takhlilu atiyahu lin-nafs wa yu'arrifu aqbayhi wa yu'arrifuhu wa ma la yakadu yadkhuluhu al-ma'u sur'atan min jazawati aw shukuki fayubliha ba'ithi wa min sabba al-ma'u bi yadihi fa innahu jaa'a athar wailun lil-aqab min an-nar wailun lil-aqab min an-nar al-aqib ash-shay'i tarfuhu wa akhiruhu thumma yaf'al bil-yusra mithla dhalik wa laysa tahdid al-ghusl a'da'ihi thalathan thalathan bi amr la yuzi'u dunahu walakinnahu aksaru ma yaf'alu man kana yu'ibu bil aqal minhu wa dhalika ajzahu idha ahkama dhalika wa la shay'u kullu an-nas bi ihsani dhalika sawa wa qad qala rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam man tawadda fa ahsana al wudu thumma rafa'a tarfahu ila as sama thumma faqala ashhad an la ilaha illa allah wahdahu la sharika lahu واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله فتحت له ابواب الجنه الثمانيه يدخل منها يدخل من ايها شاء وقد وقد استحب بعض العلماء ان يقول اثر الوضوء اللهم اجعلني من التوابين واجعلني من المتطهرين واجعلني من عبادك الصالحين واجعلني من المتطهرين ويجب عليه ان يعمل عمل الوضوء استحياء لله تعالى لما امر به ويرجع تقبله وثوابه وتطهير من الذنوب ويشر نفسه ان ذلك تعقبا وتنظف مناجاته لربه وكف بين يديه لاداء الفريضه لاداء فرائضه والخضوع له بالركوع والسجود ويعمل على يقين في ذلك تحفظا فيه في اتمام كل عمل بحسن نية فيه the heirs and you pour water over your index fingers and thumbs or if you like you dip them into the water and with them you wipe the outside and the inside of both ears women women's action and wiping women wipe their heads and ears in the same way but they have to wipe over any hair that is hanging loose and cannot wipe over any head covering wiping under plaque they should put their hands under their plaque when bringing their head when bringing their hands back to the front fourth obligation the feet the manner of washing the feet you then wash both feet pour water onto the right foot with with your right hand and rubbing it with your left hand little by little you do this thoroughly three times the toes and heels if you want you can put your fingers between your toes if you do not do this it does not matter but doing it makes you feel more satisfied you then rub your heels and ankles and any part of the water does not get to easily due to hard hardening or cracking of the skin you should make sure you do this with well warm water or the area with your hand because there is a hadith which says woe to the hill of the from the fire the hill of a thing is ex- extremely extremely or in you then do the same thing with the left foot yeah that is very important also the hadith why do it aqab like when you make it wudu about your feet you have to make so the water cover on your feet you should not leave no cap on your feet you see that also the brothers also so we look just in the heads or fast doing what do sometimes half of our feet will make the water the prophet say why do we need a the punishment for those who are doing that that is why why do is the wealth in jahannam so when you are making what do you have to be very careful don't rush making what do or she can play with you some of the part of your feet don't have water so you pay the consequence in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala three times washing each of the limbs three times is not an actual command 
You can do it less, but three is the most you should do. If you can do it thoroughly with less than that, then that it is acceptable as long as you do not leave anything out. Not everyone is the same in the amount of water they require to do voodoo thoroughly. The reward for the for performing voodoo. The Holy Prophet said, anyone who does voodoo and does it well and then raises his head, raises his eyes to the sky and says, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah alone without any partner, and I bear witness that Muhammad is a slave and messenger, will have the, have the eight gates of the garden open for him. The slave and messenger of Allah. And he can enter by any of them he chooses. Yeah, this is the sum the dua. You have to write it in English. Don't say, okay, I don't know this dua in Arabic. Allah SWT to make it easy for us. Any language you can speak, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala know what you need and what you want. Sometimes certain dua like what he said in English, you can write it and memorize it in your head. This dua, the Prophet Sallallahu after the wudu, you have to raise your, your face in the sky. Say, Allahumma, you say, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lahu, wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu. As you say this, they will open the doors of the heaven, the seven doors of the heaven, so you will enter the eight doors of the heaven, you will enter any door you want. They will open the eight doors. At that moment, the some scholars say at that period, like that day, if you pass, they will tell you, Oh, choose any door you want to enter. Either you will say, I want to go to general fit doors. That's why you have to say, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu la sharika lahu, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan rasul abdul wa rasul. Then open the eight doors, Abu Amr Samaria. Automatically open for you. For this word you say at that moment. And you don't know, maybe at that moment you can take like. Some fish said you, you, you fall and die. Or you may go to the salah, you die in your salah. Like some people pass, they are, they are making to you. Or after your salah, you can go home, you want to relax and rest, you pass. That is why to go to the heaven is difficult and easy also. But it's easy, but Shaitan makes it difficult to us because certain things like this do are very short. But most of us, like, we, we don't mind to do them. Just make or do, jump in the mercy. Make or do, jump and make our salah. So we have to help ourselves. Seek on those du'as. They will help us to go to the Jannah as easy as we can go. What to say afterwards? Some of the ulama recommend saying when you finish voodoo, O oh Allah, make me one of those who turn back to you and make me one of those who purify themselves. Allahumma in Jah. Allahumma ja'alni min al-tawabin. Wa ja'alni min al-mutatahirin. Some ahadith go, wa ja'alni min ibadik al-salihin. It's the sunnah. You will say, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasul. Allahumma ja'alni min al-tawabin wa ja'alni min al-mutatahirin wa ja'alni min ibadik al-salihin. Purpose of wudu. This is the, this is the sunnah of the dua. You can have it in English and try to memorize. You help yourself for that, inshallah. Uh -huh. And you must do wudu. Realizing that you are doing it for Allah as a as He has ordered you to do. And this is the intention also you will do. You have to have niya that okay, I'm coming to do this world, I'm doing it for the sake of Allah, and I want Allah any reward in this world may Allah give it to me. And I'm I'm doing it with intention. May Allah forgive me 
our feet, my feet, you have to think in terms of when you make it wudu. You are doing it for the sake of Allah. Because the wudu from Allah to you. As you start in wudu, you say, Bismillah, make your intention that you are performing this wudu for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with intention, may Allah forgive me for my sin. May Allah elevated me in higher position in the Jannah. You have to do that niya also. Hoping that it will be accepted and that you will get the reward for it and that it will purify you of your wrong action. Wudu as preparation. You should feel in yourself that it is a preparation and a cleansing for speaking to your Lord and standing in front of him to carry out the act he has made obligatory on you with humility and in your in your bowing and prostration. Having certainty, you should do wudu with a certainty of this. Taking good care to do it properly, for no action is complete without the right intention behind it. Okay, that's the second one. And wudu also, uh, all the centuries, all the prophets passed before the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, none of them them and their people have wudu. It's a special for the Muhammad and his ummah, like Fatiha. The secret of the wudu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we know that millions of people, billions of people came since from Adam to the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And any prophet, they will want to recognize their own people in certain kind of signs so that they can know, oh, this is my followers. So the Prophet ﷺ will recognize us in the judgment day among the billions of people for our wudu. You, you will see your face is bright, your hands. The Prophet says, ﷺ, like someone has all black camels. So what you have, you living with him in one city, you have black camels. But all your camels, their feet have the white color. So when your camel mix with his black camels, you will recognize your own. You don't need to talk. You will know, oh, this is my camel and this and this. He said, I will recognize my own followers, my ummah, because of the wudu. Wudu will make their face white for me and their hands, their feet. So the prophet will know that, oh, you are among those who believe, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. And the wudu also is a nur, it's a light for us in Surat. Like yesterday he was talking about the Surat. Wudu helps us to cross the Surat. Because listen, the wudu will be like, it's just like a light for you. When you raise your feet step, you step it, it's just like a light because of wudu. Wudu will make the Surat to bright for you so that you can walk and go. That's why those who are not performing the Salat, they don't have no light for them. When they try, they have to. They want to struggle, cross the strat so they will fail down, cause no light. They are not performing this salah. That's why you will see the Quran says they will tell the believers, "On zuruna naktabis min nuri." Come on, brother, turn on me, watch on me, wait on me, so that I can get some from your light. I can cross this strat. Naktabis min nuri. But you will respond, and some of them, they are your family members, your brothers, maybe they are not Muslims. They follow their nafs and the enjoyment. They was not performing their salah. You will tell them, in Duruna, Naktabis Minur Kila You say, hey, brother, you don't. You are back. Falsabis Minura. You have to seek lights. Go find something that make you cross. But I will not give you none of my lights. What you was doing at the time. When I told you that let me go to the mansion or let me come pray, you think that I'm joking. So I don't have no help for you. So wudu, that's why it's a sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Whether he wants to perform salah or not doing salah, he always remain with wudu. And wudu is a protection for us also. It's a sunnah before he sleep, he will have wudu. When he wants to go out, he will have wudu. Because it's a new one. And the Prophet says in the hadith, 
Have you seen someone have a pool, a swimming pool inside his house? And he used to throw himself inside that pool, clean himself five times a day. Did that man will see? No. His body or her body will be very clean. Like who used to take bath five times a day, clean himself. He will be very clean man. He said, that is the wudu and the salah. Has. When you make wudu, they say, any scenes, your eyes look, it's just like it's dropping from your eyes. Your hands, your feet, your mouth, your nose, all those things, all the scenes they, they commit, the scene is dropping. And Allah SWT has forgiven you for your sin. And wudu is a blessing for us. So we have to try when we are making wudu, we do the wudu in the right way. And let me not forget the type of water we, uh, we, we mention that before we make wudu, we have to make sure that the water is clean and there is no germs or no dirty things inside the water we are making wudu. So now, Babul Ghusl. Okay. Shalom, we're going to stop like we did yesterday. We're going to make each shack and we're going to try to eat as quickly as possible. Don't stuff the food out of your mouth, but you know, just don't billy dally either, inshallah. Uh, for those of you who are listening online, unlike yesterday, this is going to be the end for you, inshallah. Because, because uh, yesterday, you know, there's a long break. For, you know, people call in during the break, they don't hear nothing, they hang up. Uh, or they don't hate, you know, in this a half hour, 45 minutes, and then you get the end part, but you still don't get the end because we run out of time on our radio slot. So, inshallah, tune back in tomorrow, inshallah, you catch the first half of the class tomorrow, inshallah. Tomorrow, tomorrow.